barely made it, y'all. I barely made it this morning. But I'm here. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> I made it. Wow. I made it this morning again. Come before y'all. <clears throat> Another opportunity. Just to speak. Just to um chime in. Just to give myself a, um, an opportunity to speak into the minds of the people like I've been instructed to do. And I don't want no problem. I don't want no, um, I don't want any, um, any issues, to be honest with y'all. I really don't. It's only when you stop trying that you truly fail. And so... I'm here this morning, this cold morning. I'm back on my tea, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm back on my tea this morning. I need, I need something hot in my stomach. And um, I titled this, I titled this, um, this speaking engagement right here as uh, "What is Food Anxiety?" And I, where's my phone? I um I woke up this morning and I believe I have it. I think I believe I suffer with food anxiety. And I didn't even know it was a real thing. I didn't even know it was a real thing. <clears throat> to be honest with y'all, I didn't even know that it was a real thing, but I woke up this morning and um that word was in my head, food anxiety. And I'm like, I believe I suffer with that to a certain degree. Like, I wonder if there's a such thing in a DSM, because we we was we was required as um, people that's working toward their bachelor's degree in psychology to read the DSM, because we had to like write certain things out the DSM, and. Um, The DSM for psychologists is, I mean, or for therapists, like this fifth edition, the Diagnostic of Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. That's the DSM. And, um, you know, I, I read through it periodically on my assignments and things of that nature just to see what's say I wonder, is there such, such thing as restaurant anxiety? Let me see if there's such thing as restaurant anxiety. Restaurant anxiety. According to Alta Loma, the fear of dining and dinner conversations is called dyknophobia, and its effects have been described by sufferers as a prolonged panic attack. For sad and disordered eating sufferers, eating socially is directly correlated with feeling physically and mentally sick. Wow. Wow. I didn't even know that existed. Hey, y'all gonna have to bear with me through this process right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when I tell y'all, y'all gonna have to bear with me through this process. I'm, I'm in, I'm in some type of process that. Wow, I didn't even know that existed. I didn't even know restaurant anxiety existed, but um, yeah, the fear of dining and dinner conversations is called dyspiophobia. But that's not what I have. You say suffers as a prolonged panic attack for sad or disordered eating sufferers. Eating socially is directly correlated with feeling physically and mentally sick. Wow. I don't think that's me. So I ain't sitting here diagnosing myself in the front of y'all like that. <laughs> but I do have, I do have, um, Uh, um, food anxiety when it comes down to me going into a restaurant now because I know they're going to have something in that food that's not designed for my blood type and so a slice of tomato right now for me will hurt me, good morning good morning to all y'all 
listeners. I, I, I think I think this is where he has me right now. I, I believe that he has me on. I know that he has me on assignment, and I know I'm here for purpose. But I also believe that it might not be for the individuals that might tap in online today. It might be for for, for future future individuals that would eventually hear my heart because I'm just speaking from my heart I'm not um I'm not speaking from my um no Mr. Know-it-all type perspective I'm not speaking from a perspective by which you know every individual will hear my voice and and hearken I mean you, you could you gotta remember now they didn't do that with the messiah Every person that heard his voice did not hearken to his voice and uh, operate accordingly. And so I don't expect for everybody to do that to me. I, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a, um, I'm just a person being used in the earth at this moment for this season and this time. And I'm, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being used. By Elohim. I'm talking about Elohim. I'm talking about that's his name. Elohim. I'm 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 okay with being used by him at the moment. To just to, to get the word of whatever whatever he desires me to say and or do at this moment to um cause the mind of the people to to adhere to whatever being said. And so I'm here for no other reason. If it was on my own reconnaissance, if it was on my own, what's, what's the name of that? Reconnaissance or something like that. If it was on my own accord, I'm going to just use accord, the word accord. If it was on my own accord, I probably wouldn't even do this. I probably most likely would not do this. <clears throat> but it's not even on me no more. This is 100% him having a desire to do it. I don't even think I'd be here right now had I not opened that laptop. <laughs> the day that he said, talk to the minds of my people. I don't think I um, would be here. That's how, that's how much pressure I felt like I was under at that moment. I felt like I was under so much amount of pressure that had I not just opened the laptop and started talking on that day, that October 15th day, I don't even know if I'd be here right now. That's how much. That's how. That's how real it was in my life. That's how. That's how significant it was when he said that. And I just feel like why he has me. I, I don't know, but I, but I'm but I'm glad to be chosen for such a time as this. I'm, I'm actually glad to be chosen. I mean, yeah. I'm glad to be chosen. And so, why would he allow all this pressure um, that he placed on me? It was him. It was him alone that placed so much pressure on me. Um, I don't know. And so, but I'm obedient. I'm here. Um, I put my warfare look on today. <laughs> put my warfare look on because I think we're embarking upon warfare. We're embarking upon warfare right now, and the warfare is it is the food that we get ready to endure tomorrow. And somebody like, and I and I'm like, why would he tell me? Why why would food anxiety be the 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 um the topic that he would give me like the, why would why why would that that word food anxiety came so heavy in my spirit um this morning and I think I suffer with it and not because of the people that's cooking I don't think it's because of the individuals that's cooking because I don't think that our family members would cook some food intentionally for us that would eventually hurt us in the in the, in the, in, the, in the long run intentionally but i think that it can be done accidentally i really believe that 
you know, when everybody has to bring their own plates, you know, some like somebody like I, I heard one family say, um, or one young lady said a, a year ago that um that their that her family, all of them get assignments. Everybody has an assignment. Okay, you bring this, you bring that, you bring this, and you bring that, and so everybody have their own individual like assignment and then when they come together as a whole and as a family um they they all bring their dishes right and so by them all bringing their own individualized dish, that means it's cooked in se separate kitchens and so i don't think that our family members would intentionally bring food Cause they they all they worry about at that moment is the taste of the food. Like make sure the food tastes good. Like make sure it, when they hit their palates, when that food hit their palates, you want to make sure that you brought your best. You put your best foot forward with the food by which you had been assigned to bring. I don't know why I'm here right now, Lord. Oh my. Mm, mm, mm. Well, he he. He he is remarkable. <laughs> While I'm talking about this on the day before Thanksgiving, but happy Thanksgiving Eve. We celebrate this day. It's it, it's so much to say about Thanksgiving, and and it ain't always good if you know the history of it. If you know the history of Thanksgiving, then you wouldn't. Then we don't. I don't know if we would be. You know that. But but by we being in this mindset in this season. And we know, I think we all know that it is, oh, I, don't know what's, man, I don't know why he got me out here like this right now. We know it's a paganistic holiday. We we know that. Everybody know that, but we still celebrate it. So I don't know. And I'm a part of it. So I ain't talking no, I ain't talking against nobody else's celebration of what they do because it's a, it's a time and a season in our lives that we come together, we're thankful, we're coming together, we're we're grateful, we're we're coming together, we're we coming to love and love on each other because y'all know in this season right now that we've lost so many people. And um from one Thanksgiving one year to the next Thanksgiving the next year, we could have lost people in between those days, man. That is remarkable, man. We could have lost people in between that 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 one year span. We could have lost our loved ones, and so I think Thanksgiving is a season by which we can come together, that we can give thanks. You know, what I'm saying that we can um, um, appreciate one another's presence in our families, and hope you hopefully you know, what I'm saying you got a family that can just love on each other like freely, like just like really truly love on each other. And so I don't know. It's, I, I told y'all I've been instructed to come and talk to the minds of the people. So I don't know. I'm just here. I'm thankful. Back on my red clover tea. Trying to settle my stomach a little bit before I start packing on the food. But I got to think about y'all got to think about this for a second. Y'all got to think about it. I don't think our family members would intentionally bring food to the festivity. Or cook food, or whoever, however y'all do it. Because some people, you know, what I'm saying, cook the whole meal. Some people, some some people households. What I'm discovering is that they, you know, they'll do each year in a different house. Like if y'all got a big family, and y'all do each year in another person's house, in another family member's house. Like okay, we all we driving to Georgia this year, and this is we gonna do Thanksgiving here, or we gonna go to Florida this year, and we gonna do Thanksgiving here, or we gonna fly out there wherever. And we're going to do, you know, do Thanksgiving there. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody conversed on that particular house. And then everybody um, sit and, and, and enjoy the festivity of family and friends. You know what I'm saying? Which is a beautiful experience. It's a beautiful experience. But I, I, I just want to know that, do, 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 am I the only one out here suffering with food anxiety? And I know I'm not. It's just, I think my food, now that, now that I know how to eat according to my blood type, and because at one time I didn't, when I first came from Florida um, to Georgia, I was eating across the whole food diaspora. 
I ate everything. I ate conch, crab, lobster, shrimp. I loved it that. That was my that was my go to. So so what what the question why I would have to ask myself and my body like what happened between Florida food and Georgia food? Like what happened? What was the dynamic paradigm shift that happened between how I was able to eat shrimp, conch, crab, lobster, and all this old type of stuff in Florida? But then I came to Georgia, and one year later, I had a plate of shrimp, and my toe wouldn't bend. They said I had high uric acid blood levels in my body that would cause so much pain. I was in so much pain. That pain, I would not wish on my worst enemy. And so now I'm, I'm conscientious about food. I'm conscious about food. I have to be. Because my body, if I put a slice of tomato, like, like, like those little, like right now, that little white seed in tomato, like that little white little seed. I know if you slice a tomato open, you see that little white seed. Google it for yourself and see if it's in, is, is it inflammatory. It inflames my body. And I would literally be with, with a slice of tomato right now. I even have to stop eating ketchup, the condiment, because all it is is mashed up tomato and built into this little stuff. And so ketchup is not good for my body. You know what I'm saying? It's a tomato. It's a tomato paste. You know, so, so anything tomato um, messed me up. And so um, I wonder, I, you know, I wonder why right now I'm out here on this assignment. Talking about food, and food is the main source of what everybody go to right now. This is the main source of what everybody is heading to, to these specific houses and these specific dining capacities and these different creative meal sets and things of that nature that that is causing us to converge on these one houses, to converge together on this one atmosphere, this one converge together on this one Thanksgiving holiday where we can kind of sit down and, and chop it up with our families and our friends and we can sit down and, and actually eat and be merry and and, th and thank God, really thank, thank I'm talking, thanking the universe, thanking the, the Elohim, you know what I'm saying? Like we thanking the creator of all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a real festive time, but in the process of being festive, we still gotta be conscientious too. And so I really ain't had him to say this morning. But I don't know. He dropped food anxiety in my spirit. And I have it. So, you know, you know one of the most embarrassing things. This this is this is becoming embarrassing for me. To have to sit in a restaurant across the table from someone and look down the menu and act like all the choices on the menu is so much. But the crazy part about it, by me operating according to knowledge, by me, by me operating according to understanding, because we know that food is food is energy for our bodies. Food is energy. Food has been designed to energize our body. It gives us the nutrients and the and the and the values that we need, and the 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 the, the, the all of the ions and the molecular um, things that's happening in our blood. It's, it's all through the food. That's how the food. That's how our blood cells get the energy to produce red blood cells and all this other type of stuff. You know, it, it gives us the energy that we need. But if you what 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 is the opposite side of that? If if it, if, if it got to be, listen, it, it, okay, you, we know that it's only two sides of this whole thing. So if this is good food, then we got to have bad food down here. If this is good food up here, it got to be bad food down here. So what is bad food? What what would we consider bad food? Food that's causing inflammation in your body. How do we get inflammation? We get inflammation through, and how do we know we have inflammation? Because we have pain in our body. Inflammation is swells the joints and causes the pain that causes you to know that okay something is wrong. You know you got a headache. You know that could have been from the food that you ate. You know what I'm saying if you got you know saying yo 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 you got arthritis. It could have been from the food that you ate. You know bursitis, osteomyelitis. Uh, you know it's just all these different itises. Anything that says i t i i t i s on the on the inflammation. 
I equate that to pain. I equate inflammation to pain because I have pain in my body if I eat outside my blood type. Literally have pain. And so it's some things, a lot of things is made with a, a, a tomato base. They call it a tomato base. Like the base of the food is tomato. You know what I'm saying? And then now that, that my blood type, I, I know that I can't eat um, corn or cabbage. We, I can't eat corn or cabbage and, I, and, I, and, and, and potato. So those four things in my diet right now that I know for a fact I cannot eat as an A positive blood person. Yeah, potato, tomato, corn, and cabbage. That would literally put me in the hospital with a tube down my nose going out into my stomach. Literally, I'm in pain. Excruciating pain in my body. So, I don't even know, y'all. <clears throat> so, he has me on this right now as we approach Thanksgiving. But do, so, But my question to you would be, do you think a wife would really feed her husband food that she knew intentionally would hurt her husband and take him into an early death? I don't think she would. Not if she loved him. I don't think he would. I don't think my. I don't think a husband would get up in the morning and say, "Babe, I'm gonna cook you a big old breakfast. I'm gonna cook you, you know, saying some food that." But then at the same time, sit there and bring food to bed for his wife or his significant other, and then she eat it and then get sick off the food that she had just ate. But he did it with so much purity in his heart about, "Babe, I, I really <clears throat> just want to feed you in bed this morning." But how can you feed a person properly? Without knowing what they can and what they should and should not be eating, so I'm in. I, I have a, um, I have a, um, I'm on major assignment right here. So we have to, we have to know, and we just gotta have to understand. We want to understand this. We're going to understand, we're going to comprehend, we're going to walk in knowledge, we're going to walk in wisdom. Yeah, we're going to walk in all the good stuff on the, on the, on the positive side of our thought process. Because I started talking this type of talk to some people and they shut it down because they don't even want to be held accountable to the knowledge that, they, that, that that's, that's real. They don't even want to be held accountable to. They like, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say about because I want to be able to eat across. Nigga, we gonna die from something. Chrissy, you gonna die from something. We might as well let food be the thing that causes. I'm like, but if but if food gonna help extend, if you will, your life, do you have enough discipline to not eat it? If it's, if you know it's gonna extend your life and give you longer, healthier life on um in the earth. Would you would you be considerate of not eating what you know that's detrimental to your health? And so, um, yeah, I, I I don't think I I don't think there's nothing in the food um, choice on this earth that if I know if I eat it and my my um that I'll be sick that. Two days later, that I'll that I'll I'll still eat it anyway. And so um, I didn't know at one time that that um, gout arthritis ran through my family. I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And one day, not too long ago, I was sitting talking to my aunt, and you know my aunt is <laughs> it's a beautiful woman. Listen, man, I got the best auntie forever. <laughs> like, I got the best aunt ever. You know what I'm saying? My aunt is just beautiful. She's a beautiful spirit. And um, she was the only one out of my family, out of my, my mom and my uncle, that made it to 70. Can you believe that? Like, my mom passed away at 69, and my uncle, you know what I'm saying, passed away at 69. They're both 69. 
when they passed away. And they pa and they and they passed away in chronological order, which means the oldest passed and then the middle passed, and then now my aunt is the youngest. And she's still here. So we celebrated my aunt's 70th birthday, right? So I drove down to Miami for the first time. I hadn't been to Miami in two years. I actually, um, I actually, when I buried my mom, September 5th, 2020, um, I just never turned back and looked at Miami. I just never turned around and looked back at Miami. For whatever reason, I didn't never, I just never turned back and looked back. I just came I think in the, at the repass, I actually left during the repass. Everybody was out there under the tent in front of my gra my grandmother's house, and they were, you know, saying enjoying the festivities or whatever. And I believe I just told everybody bye during that time, and um, I headed back to Georgia. And I never went back to Miami till September sixteenth this year, and which was two um, two years later. And so September 16th, I, I drive down to my, my aunt's 70th birthday party. That's a blessing. 70 years on this earth. Listen, man, that's a long time. And this is not really, this is not really a dress rehearsal out here. Like we actually live in life, y'all. Like this is our lives. Like we are actually living life right now. We're living it. I was in, I was talking to somebody yesterday. And um, I said, look, I'm 55 years old. Even if the universe gave me 40 more years, I'm still going to be 95. It's going to be time for me to check out. It's going to be time for me to check out then at 95. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. So um, back to what I was saying, my aunt, my aunt, um, she has a beautiful spirit. She has a beautiful spirit. And we were um, celebrating her 70th birthday. And we all went down. We all flew in from different locations. You know, I drove. <laughs> People just flew in from different locations to go celebrate my aunt's 70. She's the only one that made it 70. I forgot what I was, well, I forgot the, the train of thought that I was on. Um, Heading on, I told y'all he gave me. He told I told y'all he just gave me an hour to talk to the minds of the people, and maybe if I maybe 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 this is therapy for me. Maybe maybe this is therapeutic for me, because I never do this. Maybe maybe this is an opportunity for me to pour out into the universe everything that's been bottled up inside of me. Maybe this is not about y'all. Maybe this is not about y'all. Maybe this is about one of a sin about me. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. All I know is I got to get on this laptop and speak to the minds of the people. And if I got to share a bit, bits and stories, of, of bits and pieces of my story, and then maybe it's something I'll say in that story that I share with, about my life that will happen, cap, cap, captivate your thought and cause a paradigm shift to happen in your life to where you open your laptop and speak. I don't know. I don't know what this is all about, you know, and even if you don't have the capacity, you know, saying to speak in front of people like, you know, um, I've learned to be able to do that through corporate. Because corporate America is something else, man. Y'all yo. Cor corporate is something, man. But um, I'm thinking I don't have to go that route. But um, yeah, so maybe you maybe you maybe y'all just here to hear my story. Maybe this is the the onset of Out the Gate with the Lemon that's coming soon. Maybe this is something that I have to just talk about to the people and to the minds of the individuals that would actually hear this at, at some given point of time or another. And then it, the, 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 the beautiful thing about this, that is nothing set. I don't have anything set in stone when I sit before y'all. I don't have, I have never conjured up anything in my mind and then came here and act like the spirit said it it has always been one percent him and i leave myself so open to receive i walk i walk with openness of mind thought body soul i open i open my i have open i, I guess he has done it I, because i was once closed too i was once closed off to expansion and closed off to growth 
and closed off to, um, I don't think I've ever been closed off to additional knowledge. I've always been uh, <clears throat> academically astute or academically inclined, if you will. Um, I think I've all. I think that run in my family. Everybody in my family, highly, highly, highly intelligent brothers and sisters. They, everybody in the, the, you know, I'm, can I tell y'all, since we talking, can I tell y'all who the black sheep of the family is? Can, y can I tell y'all, can I share with y'all who the black sheep of the family is? <laughs> well, everybody in my family is high pollutant. What y'all call a high pollutant Negro? <laughs> like everybody in my family is high pollutant. I'm the only lowest Negro on the totem pole right now. I'm the, listen, man. Listen, I'm telling y'all, all my all my family is high pollutant. They all was high pollutant. They all had their situation situated. I'm the I'm the I'm the dude in the family. I got arrested. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the dude in the family that actually had my family members had to write a report and send to their superiors because of the jobs that they held. They had to write a report. Every time I was arrested, they had to write a report and send it to the and send it to their people just to kind of keep that like that knowledge in that I'm like man when I when I heard that man I'm like wait a minute but voted most determined to succeed in high school most likely to succeed best dressed at Alapala Elementary mm-mm so, y'all know I'm on assignment. I've been on the thing 32 minutes already. Yeah, I'm on assignment. Be careful about the food choices that you eat. If you don't know your blood type, figure it out. Like, figure it out. Like, figure out what your blood type is. Figure out your blood type. Know what your blood type is. So that way, when you're preparing the food, can you imagine how good it'll feel if you're preparing the food that you're finna bring over and you knew everybody blood type that was that's gonna be in the room, right? And you prepared the food according to each and every person, but I don't even know if it could be done. Because it's so much across the diaspora of the food, you know, like nuts and grains. <clears throat> Like, you know, like peanuts, I can't, like, pe I thought peanuts was good for me. Peanuts is not good for a positive blood. Peanuts, boy, they don't, you know peanut butter, if you ate, that's going to cause inflammatory. Yeah, peanuts will. Our blood, our nut is um, almonds. Almonds, like, I didn't even know pistachios in certain blood types, it's, it's, it's inflammatory to certain blood types, pistachio. I'm like, oh, man, so I, done, so I done did so much reading, so much knowledge, so much understanding as far as food is concerned. I could tell y'all this, and here, here's a good one for y'all right now. <clears throat> if you go to these Thanksgiving meals tomorrow, and you eat, right, and then all of a sudden you get tired and sleepy, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm just so tired and sleepy. Oh, I gotta really just lay down somewhere. I just gotta take me a power nap. Guess what happened? You ate outside your blood type. Because food is not designed to make you sleepy. Food is designed to give you energy. You're gonna be out there playing volleyball and baseball. Like, man, we done ate some good food. <laughs> I'm out here ready to knock the, knock the ball out the park. <laughs> you feel ready? You know, the pool supposed to make you energized and give you strength and strong and like do like this here. Like, I wouldn't even do this at one time. <laughs> like, I wouldn't even do this. I wouldn't even do my, my wrist, but my wrist was so, I was like, ah, uh, I couldn't even hold, I couldn't even hold a razor blade or a cup. I was like, ah, uh, with so much pain. So now that I, I have reduced the inflammation in my body through eating according to my blood type, um, it's it's just been a beautiful life for me right now. I could get up out of the bed and don't have to take me an hour just to get up because my hip hurt. Or take me a 30 minutes to get up because my knee and my ankle swole. You know, so 
you know, it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Now you got me on the sign, man. Now I got to talk to the ears and the minds of people. Now people coming up with all kind of ideologies based on what they see me talk. And they don't even know I'm a whole nother person outside this camera. Like for whatever reason, when I'm sitting in front of this camera, something happens to me. Something transition. It's almost the same way when I speak, when I preach, and, uh, when I preach, um, when I stand before his children, for whatever reason, something happens to my life. Something happens to my mind. Something happens to my being. Something, something happened. I, I even have to go back and watch the videos that I had just made a few days earlier. I got to go back. I'm like, who is that person right there? Like, who is that person right there talking to these people like that? We, if y'all know, it's like if, if sometimes I feel like I'm having an out of body experience. I want to, I want to do every, I, I want to do like people like Eric Thomas and, and you know, I, I think I hold his name in a high regard, you know, what I'm saying because of his, the power that he come to the table with, and and then like how about people like Les Brown, you know, what I'm saying like these, I, I guess these can be my mentors. Maybe I need a, a speaking engagement mentor. Maybe I need somebody to just mentor me through this whole era of where I'm at. Or maybe the Holy Spirit is already doing that. Maybe, maybe, maybe Elohim has already assigned this type of construct in my life where I could just move forward without and, and let him be my guide and let him be my orchestrator and my orderer. He didn't want to order me to open this laptop and talk. So maybe I don't need no um no 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 mentor. But I think we all need mentors. I think we all need mentors. I'm just talking to y'all ear. I'm going to talk y'all ear off until he say stop. That's all, that's all I'm going to do. So don't get mad at me. I'm going to just talk your whole ear off. I know there's a lot of people online that be peeping in and listening but would never tap in and say something. I like that too. <laughs> and they come up with all these ideologies and all these <laughs> They come up with all the like, oh, you know, like it's not that. I promise you it's not that. I'm just being obedient to the call. I'm just being obedient. I'm off right now when we looking just like this. Here, I'm operating on obedient. Can you imagine that? So you can't judge the book by the cover. Do stop judging the book by the cover. Stop looking at the book and saying, ah, oh, I know what he will and will not say, or I know what he can and cannot do. Or he, you don't know. You got to listen to the message. Listen to the message. Don't look at the messenger. You could be fooled by the messenger. You could be fooled by his external poker tube. You don't never really know who he really is. You only really know his essence. So, you know, like my brother, um, 19 Key. Like my brother, 19 Key. I like that dude, man. <laughs> I like that dude. I sit there and watch that dude. I like his high level thought. I, I like his high level of conscience mindset. Forget the memorabilia. Forget the um the regalia. That's what his that's the name of. Never mind the regalia that he has on. Or never mind his faith. Never mind the faith that he by which he is. You know. No, we can't concern ourselves with that because that's what's going to keep us separated. That's still our brother. Like, until we start understanding that these are our brothers and sisters, let me tell y'all what I did. Do y'all know I'm 43% Cameroonian? I have, I'm, I got 43% of Cameroon. Cameroon. So I'm doing, now, you know, I want the regalia now. I want the regalia. You know, so I want the regalia now. You know what I'm saying? I want the Cameroonian regalia. I want the Cameroon. The Cameroon. Oh my God. Yeah, I want the Cameroonian regalia. I'm 43% Cameroon. Let me pull up what, what I am so I can share with y'all. And Cameroonian people, it's been connected to so many. You, if you Google right now, um, 
celebrities with Cameroonian roots. Guess who it all is? Like Oprah Winfrey. That's my sister. These are all my cousins and my distant cousins and all you people like that. There. They from Cameroon. They got Cameroonian roots. That's crazy. All right. Um, people like, um, let me see. Taraji, um, celebrities with Cameroonian roots. U.S. celebrities with Cameroonian roots. According to Wikipedia, R. Cheryl Lee Ralph, Condoleezza Rice, Chris Rock, and Tony Rock. Chris Rock and Tony Rock. Look, 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 look at all these people with Cameroonian roots, right? That they done went and did their ancestry. And so these is all my brothers and my sisters, my distant cousins, and all these old people like this here. You know, say if you from Cameroon, I'm rocking with you. I'm 43%. I'm almost 50% Cameroon. Look, Taraji P. Henson, American actress. She was born in South, um, Southeast um, Washington, D.C. on September 11, 1970. So, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Look, um, Don Sheetle, Don Sheetle, Oprah Winfrey, look, Anthony Anderson, <laughs> See, he's all my brothers and sisters, he's all my, look, I want to connect with these brothers, listen, if you got Cameroonian roots in you, if you, if you know your ancestry, I want to do the, I want to do the one, um, that's African ancestry, I'm going to do that one too, because, you know what I'm saying, um, I, I learned a lot about Cameroon. Man, Cameroon, we was smart. Let me tell you how. Let me let me tell you how a lot of the Cameroonian people made it through the slave the slavery slavery. Um, they were they were I think they were um they, they they body had to be immune to this to this bush that was um like this big this like a massive I guess it's a massive bush right massive that they that you can run into, and so when the slave trade came down through Cameroon. Like they by them body by their body it was almost like what we have poison ivy over here. I'm gonna do some more research because I don't really know it, but this is kind of like the vague um, thing that I had been reading. And um, and so when the slave trade came through, even our own people was trying to sell our own people at during slavery. They was trying to sell their own people, and so they'll capture their own people and then send for money to 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 I guess the Europeans or whatever. And so what happened was they had run into this bush. The, the Europeans couldn't really go into the bush because they started itching. They were scratching and itching. They was like itching. They couldn't. They couldn't even. They couldn't even. And I heard this from a young lady that was the princess of. She was a princess of Cameroon. She she told me the background drop, and I did some some research on it to validate that what she was telling me was true. And so yeah. So at the same time, what they did was they ran in to this big, I guess, forest. That had this kind of bush in it that made people itch that that wasn't their bodies wasn't immune to it, and so the people that try to go they, as far as they can go to try to run behind the people they couldn't go no further. They just ran deep up in the bush that was made them itch, and so they had to turn back around and get up out of there because they couldn't even go no further because their body wasn't immune to the itchy like it's almost like poison ivy type of deal that we have over here now, and so that's how a lot of our Cameroonian brothers and sisters um made it through they didn't get caught in the in, in, in the slave trade. And so that was remarkable that I, when you start knowing the different the different things like that, and so they was highly, highly in intellectual people like Anthony and look Anthony Amber and said, look, Chris Tucker. He he has Cameroonian roots. Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams has Cameroonian roots. That might be my my sister. Look, Spike Lee. Okay. Okay, Spike. Okay, Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Blair Underwood. Cameroonian Roots. Quincy Jones. Cameroonian Roots. <laughs> hey, boy. Hey, listen, man. This is like... Hey, boy, look. Man, we get, when you start understanding that comprehend 20 African traits back to the Cameroonian Roots, so look, there's a lot of celebrities out here that's really our brothers and sisters. Look, Common, Erica Badu. I said Black Underwood. Um, what do you name right? Eddie Murphy. 
Cameroonian roots. The Cameroon. So I did 43%. I'm 43% Cameroonian. I did that about four or five years ago, though. When I first got here, I just really wanted to know. I just basically really wanted to know what it, what it was. You know what I'm saying? Let me see if I can find my... my let me see, see if I can find my whole... Um, I know I was bond two. I got bond two people in me too. I got a little bond two. Hold on, let me see. Can I find it? <clears throat> yeah. So, y'all got. We just gotta know, y'all. There's so much information out here right now that we don't know. That it's a, it's enough to it's it's enough to make you angry if you're not careful, and if you don't understand and comprehend. You, it's, it's just enough, enough to make you um, angry, and we we know that anger is at the bottom of the other of, of the thing. We we know that anger has to be out here. So we don't we don't we don't want we can't operate in low vibration. Low vibrations? Nah, we ain't operate in low vibrations. We ain't gonna do all that. We ain't operate in low vibrations. We gonna we gonna go high. We got to go high. We're required to go high. We're commanded to go higher, to stay higher. Yeah, we're commanded for that. So, yeah, we're commanded to do better with the knowledge and the understanding and the comprehension that He has given us. Yeah, we we really like, we he's, he's he's the um. Yeah. Hey, look at this hourglass I found. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a big. I'm gonna get a big hourglass. I'm gonna get a, a nice, big, thick hourglass. That's how I, I already had a vision that I was speaking in front of this large audience, telling them about the era that we're in. And at the same time, when they walked out in the vestibule, you can go get your hourglasses. You can go get the hourglass. You can go get a big one or all the way down to one that fit on your keychain. And remember the era that we're in, the hourglass era. Yeah. I don't know if I can find it. You know, you know when you be looking for stuff. <laughs> you, know, you know how old folk you looking for stuff. You can't find it when you're looking for it. And then at the same time, how many more minutes I got for y'all? Oh, it's 47 minutes already. Y'all only got a few minutes with me, so you better. Let me see. I'm going to share this with y'all. Let me see if I can share this with y'all. Um, I know I'm 43% Cameroon. Oh, boy, I got so many other pictures and everything. Else. I don't even know where it's at. It was in my... my um... <clears throat> I'm just sitting there talking to chop it up with y'all right now before y'all Thanksgiving. For y'all going this thanks and please eat. Listen, find out your blood type. And if you don't know your blood type, that's your assignment. Find your blood type out. Like for real. Find out your blood, your blood type. And then and then look me up. And let me send you the paper. At least this, this is a start. At least this is a start to your conscientious mind. Because I think that food. Is detrimental to our health if, in fact, we're not eating the right one, right? I know. Well, I'm just talking. So y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want to adhere to what I got to say. Which which one is it? I'm just talking. Y'all done shut me down and like, oh, that nigga. I don't know what he's talking. Him. I ain't. But I'm not an expert. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, man. I'm just on assignment. So if y'all want to hit me out or not, then that's okay. I can't find it right now. I just I just ran across that piece of paper a few minutes ago. I just ran across that paper. I, I just had that paper in my in my whole um, situation a few minutes ago. <laughs> and now that I'm on live with y'all, trying to share, share with y'all my little oh did I find it? Oh no, share with y'all my 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 um, percentages. Then at the same time. I can't even, I can't even find it, but 43% Cameroon, 43% uh, Cameroon, 
It ain't gonna show it to me. I'm sitting here going through pictures. I'm trying to wait. I'm actually trying to waste some time for y'all to go ahead on, so I can let y'all go. Cause I really don't want. I I I, I told you know you know it's kind of hard. I can't find it. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, standing here before y'all every morning. It ain't hard. It's easy. It's getting easier. It's not hard at all. But standing here before y'all and then knowing that we are embarking upon a food choice. We actually embarking upon food choices that when we go and make our plate, we gotta we gotta know what you can put on your plate. Or what you can. Or do you have? Or are you disciplined enough to say? Or you just saying I don't care what food is on there. I want my palate to be satisfied. Right? <laughs> I don't care about that. What you talking about, Mister Man? I want my palate to be satisfied with this conk and this crab and this and these lobster tails. You know what I'm saying? I want my food palate to be tricked, you know, with this, you know, with everything that I want. I just want to be able to taste it and wallow it around in my because some people are driven by their some people are literally driven by their by their um palates. They don't have the discipline enough to kind of say, okay, I'm not eating this if I know I'm going to be in pain. Like my great oh, that's what I meant to tell y'all about my aunt. And my great grandmother, my, my aunt told told me she said with her beautiful spirit, she said. She said, your grandmama used to suffer with gout. I'm like, what? She said, Mama Daya used to suffer, suffer with gout. And she she knew that that food choice that she chose was going to have her in the bed, laid up with her leg cocked up for about three, four days because she couldn't walk after she ate the food. But the food was so demanding and so pulling on her so heavy till she couldn't even she'll 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 make her body be in pain just so she can enjoy the festivities of this food i didn't know that and my great grandmother too suffered with gout so i got gout arthritis through a a, a, a trickle down effect it was trickled down from generation to generation to generation. It's, it's a trickle down effect. So I'm the one, hopefully I can say something or do something or operate some capacity of the way of the word to prevent it from my, from taking on my, my, um, because if I'm going to show, if I, if I can eat according to my, um, my, my, my blood type and it lessens the effect of the inflammation in my body, then I'm doing something good. I'm doing something right. That's the only reason why I'm able to get up in the morning and still go on my daily activity without being on crutches. Because y'all know, at one time um, since I've been in Atlanta, I used to be on crutches because I, my, my ankle hurt, my switch. I'm like, why am I in so much pain? And guess what I was eating? Them Lay's potato chips. It's still potato. If my blood type say I can't eat potato, and I'm still eating mashed potato, it's still a potato. Or if I'm eating um, um, tater tots. That's still potato. Or I'm eating, I'm um, going to um, Waffle House and eating, um, um, what's the name of it? They fried the potato. Um, listen, man, it's still potato. It's still potato. So potato chips, those yellow bag lays, I was eating them. I was on them real heavy at one time. I'm like, ooh, they salty, they good. You can't eat just one. Eat that yellow bag and two days later, I'm in pain. A day later, now my body is so sensitive to I can be eating the food as I'm eating it, and my and my legs swelling up, my 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 my, my knee is swelling as I'm eating the food because it's going down through my body right then. So now my body is too sensitive to even play with this food. Y'all be careful out here with the food choices that y'all make, man. Don't go don't don't go into this holiday season. And then end up being sick because you done ate some food that wasn't designed for your blood type. So I don't, I, you know, I gotta say it. I mean, the universe got me on assignment. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being held here, um, and commanded to do what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I want to ask y'all for forgiveness, but then I can't. Who, 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 who report I supposed to believe? <laughs> Do I say okay, yo? Don't please don't beat me up because you know this is where I'm at right now psychologically. You know, what I'm saying being a student in the earth, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take all these things into consideration. I gotta take the food in consideration just like that too. You know, what I'm saying we, you know, what I'm saying you, you gotta take the food into consideration. Food is a part of the diaspora, right? So like we gotta take all these other things into consideration. We just can't say, oh. 
what you, you know. No, we got to take everything, all of it. Everything, all of it is a part of it. Everything is a part of it. All of it. All of it is a part of it. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? And so I got to eat. So as I go, I don't even know if I, I don't even know where I'm, I'm Y'all know since my mom passed away, I don't even have no reason to go to Miami no more. Even though my kids are down there and my grandchildren are down there. I got three beautiful granddaughters, you know, eight, five, and three. And so, <clears throat> yeah. So, I, I don't have no other choice but to operate. I got five more minutes in front of y'all. But listen, it's been a blessing. It's an honor to serve. I call this service. All, all, all I'm here to do is serve y'all. You know what I'm saying? Just serve y'all. I got diet in my eye. You know, I'm getting old now, 55. I still feel good, but the reality of the matter is I'm 55 years old. Got 40 more years on this earth. Still going to be 95 before I check out of here, but... It's all good. We all going to eventually have to check out. <laughs> that got to be more, one of the most hurtful feelings. Okay, I'm going I'm to talk to y'all about Eric Erickson's um, last stage of life. I'm going to talk to y'all about that. The last stage. The last stage is as you ending, as you getting ready to transition out of where you are in the earth realm into where we go. Because nobody ain't never came back and told us where we're going. Nobody in came and never told us that if it, if it is there or not. No one has ever came back and shared with us anything. So I don't think we really know. All we know is what's been said and what's been illustrated and orchestrated in front of us to believe. Because nobody has never really stepped back into this part of, 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 the, of, of the earth and said, Hey, look, you know, what was said is true or false. We, we don't know. No one really knows what happened in the afterlife. No one has ever came back and told us that. So we don't really know. We know what's been constructed. So, y'all bad with me before I get these last little three minutes out of the way. I hope I've been said something um, to y'all that, um, that would trigger a thought or trigger your mind, or I'll cause you to do a paradigm shift in your thought process. That when you go and y'all y'all know it's a big line when you go fix your plate. When you go fix your plate, you know it's like a little long line. Or you or y'all might have the little table where everybody pass this, pass that, pass this, pass that, pass. Give me this, give me them, give me hey, give me them sweet potatoes over there. Give me the mash over here. You know, what I'm give me that corn. You know, what I'm saying? give me the cabbage. You mean some, and what I don't want to do is have to go and pick over the food while people watch you do it. And you don't want to put the food on your plate because you know you can't eat it anyway. Because as soon as you see corn and some rice and peas or something, and you see the vegetables got corn in it, I already know I can't eat it. Or, I'm, or the next day I'm going to be sick. And so I, now I got to pick and choose over the plate. And very, all I can do is deal with the fried chicken. Sometimes I have to um, build, um I can't I don't even eat French fries anymore. So sometimes I have to eat um just very limited. I have to get a lot of what I can eat in order for me to get full. Because I can't eat across the whole table. I can't I can't eat across the whole food diaspora anymore. And so by me not being able to eat across the whole food diaspora, I gotta be picky and choosy and, and then it make you look like you kinda like, what type of dude this is? He got a picking, you know what I'm saying? Don't pick you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all don't even know what, how I'm living out here. But I live so healthy and I live so with my brain synapses fire different now because I don't eat outside my blood type. So my brain synapse, that's why I think I'm able to tap in. I'm able to tap into the universal conscientiousness because, I, because I'm disciplined enough to know that I can't eat outside my blood type. So I got to eat within the spectrum of my blood type. So now the free flowing energy, I'm not being stagnated by the outside stuff that's causing, you know, inflammation or that's causing your brain synapses to fire slower because you ate outside your blood type. And it's almost like when you eat outside your blood type, it's almost like you, you pushing, putting through the water holes. 
instead of water running through the water holes, let's just say the water holes is symbolic of your heart muscle or your veins and your arteries going to, to and from your heart, bringing oxygen and taking, uh, take, taking oxygen away and bringing oxygen, I mean, CO2 back into it and it regenerating growth. And so at the same time, when you got the blood, water free flowing water, run, that's when you're eating on the, on the right side of your blood type. But when you start eating on the, on the wrong side of your blood type, then it's almost like you pushing, putting through that same holes. It's put, that's how thick it is. So you, it takes your heart twice as long to beat. Twice as it take your digestive system twice as long to digest the food because it was not designed for your blood type. That's crazy. Ooh wee. Mm, mm, mm. That's all health psychology right there. That's what. I, now don't get mad at me because I'm just reverberating what I heard my professor say in. Cal State University, San Bernardino, when I drove all the way across this country to go study um, psychology, to get my bachelor's degree in psychology, that's what the professor said. And it just stuck in my mind. She said that to me, to the whole class, about 300 people, 350, 300 people in the classroom, in a big auditorium. She's like, look, that she gave that illustration, what I'm giving to y'all, she gave it to me. And it just stuck in my mind. It stuck into my Heart is stuck in like, like, be careful about the food choices as we move. It's a minute and a minute. I got an hour and a minute. <laughs> I did an hour and a minute to you. <laughs> I did. Hey, yo, yo. Hey, well, I, I'm finished. It's an hour. I did an hour and a minute already <laughs> with y'all already. I told y'all, I'm telling you. Even if these sessions are not for. The people that's online with me today, thank y'all for tapping in with me. I told y'all the universe told me Monday through Thursday. So I'm going to have to be here tomorrow on Thanksgiving. When y'all eat, I'm like, oh, my God, I got to be here tomorrow. Uh, help us, help us, Father. I got to be here tomorrow. Because he, 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 he ain't say acknowledge. He, he like talk to the ears of people Monday through Thursday in a 9 o'clock hour. If a holiday hit... On a day that I'm still, that's still for me. That's still, I'm, I'm still on assignment. I'm still on assignment. So y'all bow with me, even tomorrow. I don't even want to come and talk to things. We going we maybe we'll talk something lighter. Maybe we ain't gonna talk about food tomorrow. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about food. Hey, look, cause y'all know y'all be mad at me. Like, oh, Chris, I don't care what you say. I'm gonna put this, this um, these mashed potatoes on my plate. Why? Well, I don't care what you talk about. Nigga, put that extra butter to it too. And I understand y'all like, listen, okay. <laughs> Hey, I know y'all, I know what y'all gonna tell, I know what y'all gonna be saying, like, hey, man, I don't care nothing about what that dude say, I want this pot roast, I don't, what, pot roast, what, I didn't, my, my grandmother sat and cooked this pot roast for about two, three days, so you know I'm finna get me a slice of this pot roast, now, one thing I'm doing, eat my old pork shop, now, nah, okay, Chris, I know what you talking about, but boy, you know, I'm gonna eat me old, I'm gonna eat me a pork chop sandwich. Tomorrow, I will eat me a slice, and I'll go back to what you're talking about the, the next day. This is, this is the mentality of the people. You know what I'm saying? I am going, I'm going to indulge. I only get one day. Give me this one day out of the week. Give me this one day out of the year. All I need is one day. I'm just going to eat. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to eat me some pig feet now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to eat me some chitlins now. One thing about it, but them good old chitlins. One, one time out of the year ain't going to kill nothing, Chris. Ain't one thing out of the year ain't going to hurt me. One thing, one time out the year. That's what I have to deal with. So, I'm going to let y'all live tomorrow. Maybe we'll just talk about the turnaround. It really ain't about the turkey. It's about the turnaround. How about that? Ooh-wee, that's a, that's a subject matter. It ain't about the turkey. It's about the turnaround that has to happen in your mind. To make the paradigm shift, the positive pivotal movement in your mind to take your mind to make your body and your spirit follow. Maybe, maybe it's the spirit first. Maybe, I don't know. It's mind. They got. They always got to put mind, body, and spirit. I don't know why spirit is always last. Maybe it's the spirit because we're really not. We're really not. We're really not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We're really not that. We are really spiritual beings having a humanistic experience. That's why it's so short-lived. That's why that little dash. Oh, Lord. I don't know why I'm talking like this. 
that that's why that little dash between our birth dates and whatever date is our ex expiration date um that little dash between those two dates is symbolic of everything that you've done in your life that is remarkable that little small little dash in comparison to eternity we that's why you're nothing but a vapor here on this earth you better live life and you better live it more abundantly you better live life you better enjoy the whole moments of it all you better embrace it psychologically and understand who, where you are, who you are, operate accordingly, and then move according to your whole spirit, knowing that 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 this is not, this is not all of it. This is not all of it. It's more. It's more. It's more. I thank y'all for time chiming in with me. Good morning to everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Sheila, good morning. Good morning. Thank y'all for tapping in with me. Y'all know I'm on assignment. Y'all know I be, uh, you know, I'm just on assignment. Look, my stomach growling right now. I drunk that red, this, this red clover tea on point, though. Red clover. Y'all Google it. Red clover tea. I'm back on red clover. I just had to, I just drink, I need something in my stomach to kind of help flush. How about all the people that didn't flush out first? How about all the people that's going to put this Thanksgiving food on top of the food that was already been in your body two, three weeks ago? Y'all got to flush. You got to take a slap. You got to flush out and then prepare for the food that you get ready to partake in for Thanksgiving. I don't know what just made me say that. I don't know. What, listen, I got to go, y'all. All these, all these premonitions and everything that's coming um, down the pike. Hopefully somebody will be able to hear my word, hear my voice, and understand my heart. Understand that I come from a pure space. Understand that I'm coming from a, a from a holistic um, um, viewpoint. I understand that I'm coming from a whole universal perspective. This is not just one p particular narrative being pushed down through one situation. This, I mean, he said expand. He told me to expand. He, he done took me to the expansion of my mind so deep. To where I just I'm going everything that he's left here, if he if he left it here, and it's and it's and it's for me to tap into, then guess what I'm gonna do? Tap into it. This right here is lava. Google lava benefits. Just Google lava benefits, y'all. Just Google lava benefits. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Lava has benefits. That was his spoken word. Y'all see? I still ain't got it hard enough to light my own piece of wood yet, though. They call this holy wood, and I ain't lit it yet. This is Paulo Santo, but I ain't, I'm, I'm good on that right now. Maybe, maybe he'll when, whenever he lead me to light it, I will. That's his, that's his stuff. So holy wood. So I will light it when it, whenever he lead me to do it. But I ain't doing nothing outside. I ain't doing nothing outside of what he desired for me and my mind and my heart at that moment. So <clears throat> y'all bear with me as I, as I flow through this thing called life. Y'all be y'all be blessed. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. You know what I'm saying? We got that's great. We still gotta say this stuff and even we know what it really I wonder if we're gonna be held I wonder what we are we gonna be held accountable to the things that we know that we should not really be tapping into, but we still get tapping into it because that's where the whole festivities of the world is going. We gonna need his grace, y'all. We gonna need his mercy. Because if he really hit us across the head when we know certain things already, it's proud time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but um if he if he do that based on the things that we we, we know we know already about the historical data of these days that we're that we're celebrating, and at the same time, he 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 judges us according to what the knowledge that we know that we should not be doing, and we're still doing it anyway. Is that a certain sign of rebellion? Man, it's just so much, man. Y'all pray for y'all pray for me. Pray my strength. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna continue to move forward with with, with my assignment. I don't even, at this moment I don't even have a choice in the matter. Um, if you sit me down and say, shut up, then I will. 
But until he say that, then I'm gonna continue to press forward. I'm gonna continue to move according to the to, to the to the um overall um mindset shift that has you know catapulted and propelled me into this dimension of thought. I mean, it's a higher level of thought. Don't get mad at me because he then took me to a higher essence. I, I have to go. I, I can't stay back here. I had to go forward. I got to go up. I got to go out. I got to go inward. I got to go inward. I, I, it, it's not Everything is not tangible to the outside. It's some things that's internal that he'll deal with you internally about that causes you to manifest your stuff ex externally. And I guess that's where I'm at right now. So y'all bear with me. Um, thank y'all for tapping in. Y'all get an opportunity to, to, to hear my heart, hear my mind. Um, I want to keep it at to the purest sense as possible. I don't. I don't know how not to. Anybody that really know me know I. I'm just gonna be a hundred percent real individual, <clears throat> and I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk accordingly. I'm gonna walk accordingly. Um, so, yeah, y'all be blessed. I see y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is is the day that we call Thanksgiving. And so we, we, I guess we just give thanks and I'm, I'm going to talk about the turnaround, the paradigm shift, the pivot move that has to be taken in order for us to walk according to his purpose and his plan for our lives. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be blessed. Thank y'all for tapping me. I got some loyal people that just be tapping all the way. Thank y'all, man. Y'all don't even know that. Y'all listen, you know, that's support for me. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that. That's just make, it. Made me feel like I'm support, even if even even if the even if the assignment right now is not for now. Maybe these messages has to be for the future. I don't know. But peace and blessings to you. Thank you very much. I tell, thank you, thank you, Sheila. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tapping in. And I'll definitely talk to you another time. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>